Ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves for the all-encompassing power that is After Hours. The Out There Hour on Alternative Future Radio. The Out There Hour with Basil and Mark. www.alternativefutureradio.com Yay! Wow. Wow. <laughs> and one for Q8. Oh, yes, we are, in fact, big in Q8. Yay! That's a big yay out to Q8 there. Hello, Q8. Hello to all our friends in the Middle East. We do seem to be quite big in Q8. The stats are certainly stacking up, and uh, Q8 is right up there. We, oh. don't, we, don't, we don't know who you are. We don't know why you are there, but, you know, whatever, hey, really. Let, let Hello, us, Q8. Let us know. We were most popular in Q8, then comes America, then, then I think Saudi Arabia. So, yeah. What's that all about? Is, uh, is Al-Qaeda in Q8? Is that where they're hiding out? But we're so anti- What, and they're listening to us? Well, we're, we're so anti-establishment. Yeah. Do you think that they think we're there? We're like a mentor to them. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we're uh, radical humor clerics or something. That could be it. What's what's what? <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's on the agenda today, Mark? Um, I think you've got a competition to announce. Oh, yeah. a, 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 well, not so much a prize, but a winner. Well, uh, uh, we'll see. Prize? We'll tell you. The winner. Of R- the co- I think you should probably remind people what the competition is, since you've been supposed to do this for two weeks. Yeah. Okay, let's get there. We played a track. We did. Two weeks ago. Yes. And we said to guess the artist. Guess the artist. Oh, that was the first of the two competitions. Because we did it again the week after with two tracks. Yeah. 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 So it's the first competition. It's the first one. Right. Okay. True. Uh, uh-huh. The winner was Rose McNeely. Right. Of Texas. Aha. Uh-huh. Um, and she... She I hope she's not joined this, because otherwise she'd be the Yellow Rose of Texas. That's, oh. oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a, yeah. Where do I pull those from? Moving on really swiftly. Okay. Uh, she guessed it was uh, Waiting for the Train. Waiting for the Train, yeah. By uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Ruffin. What the hell are you on about? That's not who it was. <laughs> <laughs> you're making this. Sh- <laughs> you're making this up. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. She, uh, she's right. That is uh, who sang Waiting for a Train. Just not the one. That's we, just not the. Just not the one we played. Yeah, but I mean, but, I thought we should send her a, an autographed <laughs> uh, photograph of ourselves just for entering. Send her a sample of our DNA just for entering. But so she answered a question other than the one that we asked. Yeah, fantastic. It was the right answer. It was just. It the, was the right answer, but to the wrong question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still makes her a winner in my book. Everyone's a winner on this show. Um, right, what else have we got to do? Um, oh, dear. I, oh, I want to point out, by the way, that I noticed earlier yesterday that putting things in your ears makes you cough. Yeah, that's true. I don't know what that's about. Uh, it's cotton buds. Well, I didn't put a cotton bud in my ear. I put an ear vacuum in my ear, Oh. which is a device I bought from South Korea. Oh, I often... Hello, South Korea. We're probably big there Probably, as well. yeah. Well, I often put uh, cotton buds in my ear, and uh, you're never meant to do that. No, it says on the wrapper in big letters, do not put in your ear. Mm, a chemist said to me, never put anything smaller than... <laughs> <laughs> smaller than what? A chemist, seriously, a chemist said to me, never put anything smaller than your elbow in your ear. And I thought, well, what? How the, how the hell How could I... you put your elbow in your ear? Or something bigger... Or... Oh. Oh, uh, your thumb or something. What? No, I think she just meant something the size of your elbow. <laughs> <laughs> so things that are bigger than your elbow are okay to put in your ear? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a little bit weird. That is a bit strange. It she was... wasn't a vet, was she? Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> An African elephant vet or something strange. Well, you've brought it up now, so tell us about the vacuum you bought from Korea. Oh, I don't really want to go into it. Good, yeah, carry on with it, the list. It's just not funny. It's not. It's no. not funny. Um, what else have you got on your list? That You had something else that you wanted to do today. What, my top five? Well, no, no, before we get to top fives, you had something else. You had the competition and there was something else. Oh. Uh, was there some announcement or, or something else? Can't think of any. Oh, what slacker. <laughs> Amateur. Ooh, I'll tell you what we were going to do. I'll see if I can call it up on the, uh, on the internet. We were going to do it on this day. Oh, uh, yeah. Which I, I know you said was boring, but... Uh, Completely. Yeah, I mean, it depends what happened on this day. I haven't checked, so, I don't know, we'll have a look. Oh. Should we do a top five while we're waiting for this crappy internet to get yeah, going? Yeah, yeah, go, go. Right, uh, we were deciding the other day that we were going to do some top fives. Um, 
I've done the top fives for uh, guests I'd like to have on, although I've got one that I'm not so sure about because uh, <laughs> I don't know if he's alive or not. Um, I've done top five 80s TV shows. Oh, yeah. Top five worst films ever and top five 80s kids shows. Okay. So what do you think about that? Have you, have you done any of them? Can we actually compare anything? Or have, or have you just completely slacked off and I've, not done anything? I've done one. You've done one. It's the uh, guest we'd like to have on. Right, go on. You want me to go first? Yeah, go on. Do, start at number five if you've got five. Well, it's not in any particular order. Right. So it's, it's not a five to one because I don't want to insult or pull off any of them. That, right, uh, okay. That are probably listening in. Right, go so, in. Well, so, you, can, you can do all five flat then. Okay. I don't want to say that one's better than the other. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Although that is what you mean. No, no, it isn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it isn't. I know who number one You've got is. got little stars next to some of them. Well, I'll start with, uh, I'll start with number five then. I think George Norrie. George Norrie? Um, yeah, George Norrie. But he's an interviewer. Yeah. What are you going to ask him about? Oh, he's just great. He's the uh, host of uh, Coast to Coast AM in America. He is indeed, yeah. Uh, my favorite radio show. <coughs> yes. The uh, inspiration for the Out There Hour. i tell you who I I've got an actual space missing on my top five. I only came up with four. But I'll have Art Bell for number five. Oh, good, yeah. Because um, I've actually added Art Bell on Skype. He's still kicking around, you know, and he's still doing stuff. He's, he's just a, not working at Coast to Coast. I think he's in Hawaii or something. He's just retired, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, Art Bell was quite cool. He was cool before George Norrie. This is pretty good. I'll do mine, and you, then you. Yeah, do, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah you, you do one of yours then. This is people now. I seriously want to get onto the show. And if we've got the same one, then well, I imagine some of them might be the same. Let's see. I, I bet we've got the same one here. Go on, Nigel Farage. No, but that's who I should have put on there. I knew there was somebody I was trying yeah, to think of. Yeah. Nigel Farage. Yeah, definitely. Explain who Nigel Farage is. He is a UK uh, UKIP. Uh, UK, UK Independence Independent Party, Party yeah, yeah. Uh, MEP in the European Parliament, yeah. even though he despises the mere existence of the European <laughs> Parliament, yeah. which is somewhat ironic, and you can imagine the kind of problems he causes them on a day-to-day -day basis. Oh, he gives it to them straight. He's he gives fantastic. Them, he gives them nothing but uphill. He's really but He's great. So you, uh, your counter to me? Well, my opposite would also be involved in politics, but he's not actually elected. I'd like Zbigniew Brzezinski to come on the show. What's the likelihood, though? Fairly slim, yeah. unless we abducted him somehow. Yeah. Uh, I just thought he'd be good to get on the show because, Mind you, uh, you so know. No harm in asking. Let's email him. Yeah, let's find out. It's probably somewhere. Yeah. At bohemiangrove.com or something. Yeah. Go on, you do one. <laughs> um... A kind of obvious one, really. I guess somebody that everybody wants on, you know, David Icke. I've got Icke on mine as well, yeah. 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 Uh, chances are he probably will come on. Well, he will we'll be too big. We'll be too big for him to ignore. Um, He'll be asking us to come on. Oh, so are we matched up on that, David Icke? Yeah, okay. I have that one. Um, it's like battleships, but somewhat more interesting than the film. Um, I think I'd like any, any of the Doctor Whos. Any Doctor? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. That is Doctor still who, yeah. alive, like uh, except Sylvester McCoy. No, I particularly wanted him. Oh, what? Oh, I like him. Oh, he's the worst Doctor Who ever. It doesn't matter. He's I. No, he's not the worst ever. Oh, who was the worst ever? None of them. They're all good. Colin Baker, you might say, was the worst ever. But again, no, well, yeah, he wasn't great either. But Sylvester McCoy, he was the worst. Tom Baker, however, was just a god of Doctor Who's. You won't get Tom Baker. No, because he lives in France and he doesn't do interviews and he doesn't really yeah. mix with people anymore. But he's a bit mental, so you may get him. He is a little bit crazy. Mm. He might just take it on a whim and, and just turn up. Go on, counter that. Jesse Ventura. Good. Very good. Uh, for yeah. almost exactly the same reasons. He's absolutely he completely... Play, he played Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he played <laughs> Doctor Who. Um, well, he's played so many different things. Um, <laughs> he, he just sounds super cool. Uh, this is embarrassing. How many have we gone through? I'm not sure. Is it three or four? <laughs> three or four-ish. Um, I've got... Um, only one left to read, in fact. So okay, well, I guess my number one. Yeah. Uh, um, we, we, we covered it somewhat uh, on the last show. Oh. Uh, my number one. Yes. Uh, is I thought they weren't doing them with, with numbers. Well, I wasn't, but this, this, is, this is number <laughs> one for me. Go on. I think everybody will yeah. uh, understand when I, when, I, when I say it. Go uh, on. Mr. Drummond from Different Strokes. <sighs> Conrad Bain. What? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Drummond is your top guest. Yeah, just to hear him tell us off. So we've got the big new Brzezinski, famous neocon, Jesse Ventura, former governor of Minnesota, I think it was. Mm -hmm. We've got David Icke. Um, we've got, who was one of your other ones there? Uh, Nigel Farage. I've got Brian Gerrish as my number oh, one. Oh, yeah. 
and you'd rather have Mr. Drummond from Different Strokes. Yeah, well, I want a bit of variety on the show. <laughs> I mean, it's all a bit heavy, isn't it? Well, they are a little bit heavy. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. It's a big new Brzezinski might be a real laugh. <laughs> you yeah. have a great sense of humour. Not, not, not. <laughs> So, yeah, well, that's our top five uh, wannabe guests. Go on, give us another top five. That was fun. Right, all right. I've got a couple here. Since, bearing in since, mind. Since you've bear, slacked off bearing, completely. Yeah, I haven't written any. You've just not bothered. Go you've on. just not put any effort in at all. I'll, I'll I carry you. I'll pretend. Uh, right, okay, okay. Uh, top five worst films ever. Oh, Jesus. In the history of filmmaking. Oh, can I go first? And these, are, and these are in order for me. Can, go I, on. can I go first? Go on. Because I've got one. Go um, on. Jim Carrey. <clears throat> yeah. Mr. Popper's Penguins. Awful. That's not on my list because I haven't yet seen it. You don't want to see it. It's but two of Jim Carrey's films are on my list. Um, I don't even... Uh, Jim Carrey is uh, some kind of an executive in an expensive apartment and he loses his job <laughs> and his father, who abandoned him many years ago, sends him a box of penguins. <laughs> <laughs> Not and chocolate penguins. No, no. They, they come in a box. No, actual penguins. Yeah, they in come a box. Yeah, it's just oh ludicrous. Oh my god! What and a start. Yeah, it's just rubbish. <laughs> it's terrible. That's bad. It is. That is bad. It, it is as bad as it sounds. Well, my number five worst film <laughs> is a film that a lot of people think is great. I think it's awful. I think it's boring. I think it's completely overrated. Um, Blade Runner. Can't ah. stand it. Boring. Don't see the appeal. Yeah, I kind of liked it when I was a kid. Tried to watch it ten times, fell asleep ten times. Never seen it, only in segments. Was it because you'd have to watch it at the time? Was it because it was a film of its time? Maybe it was, maybe it was, but I tried watching it in the early 2000s was the first time I actually came across it. That's uh, Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford, yeah. And Rutger Hauer? I'm not sure who else is in it. Again, I kept falling asleep. I couldn't watch it. It was, it was, it was like... It was like I'd been date raped or something. I'd fall asleep wondering what on earth had happened the day before and what the hell, had, you know, who were these people? D uh, date rape by Harrison Like, like I'd been raw hypnoled by Harrison Ford or something. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> I, think just you, awful. I, I think that's a controversial subject there, Mark. I think you might get a backlash on that one. What? Being date raped by Harrison Ford? No, no. Oh, Blade Runner. Blade Runner. It's, it's, one, of the num it's one of the top ten uh, sci-fi movies of all time. I know, and I like my sci-fi, but I don't think that that is, is it. I think it's rubbish. Uh, go on. Have you got another one? Uh, no. That's it. You, you, that's it. You just give, peaked. Give me a chance. You, you peaked me too a, soon. Uh, I, yeah, I spread myself too thin. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it again. <laughs> Every week. Damn it. I'll try and write down something. Keep going. Okay, I'll give you my number, uh, number four. Another Jim Carrey spectacular, The Majestic. Never seen it. Don't. I suspect it's worse than Mr. Popper's Penguins. What's it about? Uh, now, I remember it. I watched it once. I can't remember all the story because uh, I've tried to block it out. Um, he, I think he loses his memory and then comes back and ends up in a town. Maybe he comes, comes back from a war or something. And they all think that he is somebody and he owns a cinema or something. And they have to get this cinema up and going. But it's just awful. It's just bad. It's just awful. I might give it a watch. Yeah, you do that. You do that. Doesn't sound too I don't, bad. I'm not having any level of responsibility for that. It, okay. It's just awful. Have you got another one yet? Have you thought of another worst oh, film? I'm failing. So, oh, oh my God, this rubbish. is so bad, isn't oh, it? You've got to, surely. Oh, no, I didn't have time. Time? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> All you do is sit at home and wait to come back here every week. No, no. In a I was, capsule. Uh, no, I was researching. Researching? Researching. Right, okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to wrap this up and then we'll have a little bit of a song. Um, I've got... Good, because we're dying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next one, number three, Tree of Life, a reasonably new film. Um, the blonde-haired guy. Um, no, it's that ginger woman who mumbles all the time, and it's showing you a, a planet crashing into the earth at the same time as a 1950s family lifestyle. It's And the, there's very little words it, in it. Is there loads of footage of... Loads of footage is the correct oh, word. Oh. <laughs> it's just gibberish. It's just nonsense. Of planets and stuff. Yeah, it just makes no sense. Yeah, I, I did watch it, fell asleep 40 minutes into it. I almost. managed 15 minutes. Wow. Now, uh, number two, again, similar similar kind of story, Melancholia, oh, which yeah. I think probably won an Oscar or something, I, or a nomination. I don't know what that was about. The first three quarters of, no, first ha ha hour or more of the film uh, could just have been deleted because there was no content in it. The second half had got a point, but it was just awful, and who, it was just so drab. Who was in that? 
It was, um, what's his name from 24? Kiefer Sutherland. And was Jodie Foster in it? Oh, I don't know who the woman was. I'm um, all mixed up there. I'm not sure. No. He, was, he was in it in a very weird part. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was just awful. He was, was in a, desperate. He was in a good horror film called Mirrors, which you wouldn't have seen. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. That was good. Yeah, I didn't know it was a horror film. I started watching it. I've always been a bit scared of Mirrors. I'm not scared of Mirrors, I'm scared of horror films. Yeah. Okay, my number one all-time worst film ever in the history of films, Jim Carrey, Man on the Moon. The story of Andy Kaufman. Yeah. Andy Kaufman, possibly the world's most unfunny person in the history of funny. They made a documentary starring the current world's most unfunny person. A documentary film, in fact, it's supposed to be fictionalised drama, uh, fictionalised documentary. So they've got a really unfunny person playing possibly the history's world's most unfunny person. Hey, isn't that weird? I don't get Andy Kaufman. Never did. That's because it's not funny. But uh, I, It's not that you don't get it. It's he, not funny. He was kind of funny in Taxi because I love Taxi. Yeah. I, he, I, I never miss Taxi Taxi as a was kid. okay, but he, he was playing himself. He wasn't acting. He was literally nuts. But I've seen... I guess I haven't seen him, but I've seen what he was doing in the film, Jim, Jim Carrey's film, and it just... I just don't know what it was about. It went beyond me. <sighs> oh, it was just bad, 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 bad. Fair enough. Right, shall we play a little bit of music and then we'll come back? Why not? Right, okay. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Jesus, wasn't that a delight? <laughs> yet again. <laughs> Have yet, I excelled myself? Yet, yet again, for the love of Jesus, if you've got an MP3, will you please send please, it to us? If uh, you've got any music that you own the copyright, to just send it in. Just so we can Save stop us. playing this crap. Save us from instrumentals. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good grief. Uh, thanks very much, Sopa. Yeah, thanks for that and everybody else. Um, speaking of Sopa, an actor, apparently actor, is almost dead in the water. Oh, yeah. explain that one to me. Apparently it's the, no, it's the something copyright trade agreement. It's not actually a law, but its existence means that they'll have to bring in a law to abide by said trade agreement. So it's kind of a backdoor law. But apparently some of the people that are supposed to support it have pulled out. So it looks like it might actually be uh, dying a death. Which is nice. That's great. So that's some happy news. Does that mean we can play some decent music? No, 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 ah. no. We did some top fives. Shall we carry on with the top fives? Yeah, let's have a top five day. Right, we did the guests. We did the um, worst films. Uh, and I've still got two of my own personal top fives uh, left to, to do, which is the uh, 80s TV shows. Let's see if I can chip in here and somewhere. And 80s kids shows. Oh, well, we, pick one first. Kids um, shows or TV shows? Better do kids shows first, because that's, kids that's shows. my uh, Right, okay. Uh, now, you've not bothered to do yours, because you just slacked off. Correct. Okay, so have you got anything that you'd like to add on to your off the top of your head five? Um, I think uh, yeah, I think the first one I'd like to talk about is uh, Silver Spoons with Ricky Schroeder. Yes, I like Silver Spoons. He had a giant train set in, yeah. his, in, his, in his playroom. It was this it? incredibly rich guy who didn't know he had a kid and the kid was in military school. Don't know yeah. how. But, uh, and then he was sent to the father and the father had a giant train set. that It was one he could sit in. Yeah. Actually. And, oh yeah, and like a mini around. railway. Yeah, he was just like a big kid. It looked enormous fun. Yeah, oh yeah, I like that. And uh, I don't know. Silver how... spoons forever. Yeah, I don't know how remember many. It? Oh, and there was a woman in it as well. She was gorgeous. I don't remember that. Oh yeah. I think I was only about eight. I was, I was only probably eight. more concerned with the train mm -hmm. set. Yeah, well, and uh, she was the personal assistant, and I think they eventually married. Ah. You shoot because I've got another one after this. Oh, go on. Well, my number five. Brace yourselves for this. The littlest hobo. You've yeah, got, that was good, yeah. The Littlest Hobo was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, what are you on about? That was um, good. No, you, 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 you can't knock The Littlest Hobo. I can. It was, it was brilliant. I mean... It was cheaply made. It was cheaply made. That much is true. I think it was Canadian, was it? It, it had a nice theme tune. Yes, as you can see me quickly trying to type it in, see if I can find it, see if we can play it. Hang on, where is Let's it? Let's give it a play. Shall we see if we can do it? Why not? Go on. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. I like There's it. There's a voice. Come on, everybody, join in. I'll play it. Let, play Come it on. Through. Play it through. Shall we? Yeah. It's only on. a couple of minutes. There's a voice keeps on calling me Down the road, that's where I'll always be London is the name of the dog, apparently. 
I bet there was more than one dog. I suspect there may have been. Wow. It's about me. I'm going to fade it down there because I think I've downloaded the uh, extra long EP version because it's nearly three minutes long. I go from town to town making friends everywhere I go. Friends? Yeah. It's like a witch hunt. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. that's, and they chase you out of the town with lit torches. Keeping in with the theme there, if you say it's Canadian, it uh, brings... I, it, it looks Canadian. I'm not sure if it is. It, sounds, it looks and sounds Canadian. Are there any mounties in it? I think yeah. there might be. What about uh, beachcombers? Don't remember that one. Oh, no, we've died. Oh, no, you've died. No, <laughs> what's you, that about? I don't remember that. Oh, cr- oh well, there's no... No point talking about yeah, it. Explain it to me. Some, c- there are people listening, agreeing with you, going, "Yeah, Beachcombers, fantastic okay. program." Okay, no our listeners in in Kuwait. Yes. Uh, do you remem- <laughs> remember? Remember <laughs> Beachcombers, the uh, Canadian loggers? It was awful. It ran from. How this- can that be in your top five? It was awful. I thought it was the top five bad ones. No, Little is Hobos, fantastic. Oh, it's good ones. Good ones, oh, top five. Oh, oh, I've got it all mixed. The, the key's in the name, it's the top five. Yeah, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm, I'm having a day. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good one. Yeah, more of an epoch. Yeah. Uh, so, no, no, top five, top five. Okay. Little is Hobo and me came in at number five. Okay, number five. Uh, I I, um, I counted that with Silver Spoons. Yeah, you had Silver Spoons, okay. yeah. Uh, okay, my number four, uh, 80s kids shows, top Top five, top this five, is. Okay. Not, not worst five, not bottom five. Number four, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm. I thought it was fantastic at it the time. It was okay. It was brilliant at the time. I quite liked it. I would counter that because I'm a little bit older than you. I was a little bit old uh, for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but I still liked it anyway. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. It was all right. There's nothing wrong with I that. I quite liked it. Um, it was quite epic. I liked the game. The game was quite good. I used to play it in the arcades. It was quite good. Oh, yeah. 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 I would have been more Masters of the Universe. Yeah, well, I've got something similar to that on the list. I liked Master of the Universe. It was all right. I know what you've got that's similar. It was a little bit homoerotic, I found, Masters of the Universe. What, He-Man? Yeah. What, He-Man in his furry uh, loincloth? Yeah. and everybody Homoerotic? Yeah. What what can you mean, Mark? Everybody seemed to be very scantily clad. Especially the big, beefy men. And quite muscular. Yeah, yeah. Is that why I liked it? And he was riding a cat. (laughs) Riding a a cat, yeah. (laughs) Uh, I'm sure you can relate to that. (laughs) Moving on swiftly. Number three for me, Battlestar Galactica. The original series? Yeah. Oh, definitely. It's fantastic. Oh, it's great. By your command. Hang on. Oh, Echo. Shall we do it? Oh, hang on. By your command. Very good. That didn't really work, did it? It was the Cylons with that red light going from side to side. They were good. The Cylons were, they were kick-ass. Yeah, they were. I like them. Have you got anything to counter that? I I have. Go uh, on. Buck Rogers in the 25th century. I love that. Oh, wow. And I love the theme tune as well. I'm not going to play it. Brilliant brilliant guitar playing. I mean, I I could probably play it. Probably. Probably. Um, By the way. On a keyboard. If anybody, if anybody in in the, in broadcasting could do it, could you do Tweaky? Tweaky. Oh, I can. Really, really. <clears throat> I can. Go on, do Tweaky. Hang on. Hang on. Add a little bit of bass to this. Are you bracing yourselves, everybody? I don't want to oversell it. Oh, it's it. going to be very exciting. Okay. Don't <clears> oversell <throat> it. <clears throat> okay. Doobie, doobie, doobie. Hiya, buck. Oh, that was great, what man. What do you think? Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, do you think bad. Could, could you have done with a little bit of echo on it and do it again? Did he have an echo? I think he had a slight bit of echo. Oh, yeah, well, go on. Try a bit of echo. Try it again. Doobie, doobie, doobie. Hiya, buck. <laughs> It sounds, it sounds more space age. Yeah, really. a little bit, yeah. Buck Rogers, he was frozen in, um, he was an astronaut and he was frozen, was it 1997? I think something, it was something like something that. Something ludicrous yeah. like that. Yeah. And then uh, he, he got lost in space and he was defrosted in was. the year 2025? 20, I think no. it was something like 25th or, century or 23rd. 20, 25th century. 25th century, yeah. It was fantastic. Wilma Deering, oh wow, she was gorgeous. I always remember the episode. Oh, I assume she was the blonde woman. She, no, she was sort, sort of auburn, sort of reddish. I think I remember her. Wilma Deering, and I, the, an episode that I shall never, ever forget. You were like a heightened sexual child or something. I was looking at the spaceships. <laughs> but I, oh, look at that, spaceships. No, no, no i got to tell this story. It was, oh, oh, maybe it was I, your I mum ne- fetish or something. No, or? no, I should never forget this. Some, some, a, a group of, um, I'm going to get into trouble, a group of midget. <laughs> no, not again. 
<laughs> Not again. A group of mid- Every week with the midgets. What do you call it when you can move things They're gonna with, come for you. with the power of your mind? Telekinesis. A, a group of midget telekinesis. With telekinesis, yeah. Um, started undressing Will Deering by the power of their mind one episode. And that's one that, midgets? Yeah, that's one, that's one that <laughs> they started unbuckling her clothes. Oh, it's so exciting. Um, <laughs> Never seen so many midgets. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> oh, that's desperate. I know, yeah, it's bad. And the bit of the midgets again. Oh, We're going to get letters. Jeez. <laughs> right, okay, number two, Wonder Years. Yeah. I quite like the Wonder Years. Yeah. It was of its time. When it was, you, it was pretty see, good. When you think back at it now, you think, oh, what a lot of rubbish that was. But at the time, no. it was cutting edge. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it wasn't I'm bad. trying to judge it on how I thought at the time. And at the time, it was, it was, you know, it was pretty I, I'm good. I'm just struggling to count a one with you now. Oh, you've got to have another one. Come on, children, well, 80s well, children's well, TV shows. Yeah. It, was, it was the decade of children's TV Did shows. Did you say 80s? Yeah, 80s. Oh, you've done me now. You've got to. Oh, you've finished me. Why? Because I have one, but it's not in from the 80s. When is it from? 70s. S- there are 70s TV shows? Go on. It can, may have stretched into the 80s. Can I do it? Go on. Because it would have run into the 80s easily. Well, oh, well, I had... Um, I've got one here that... I mean, some, one of these going to sort of kind of into the 90s. So it's in both decades. Yeah, okay, yeah. well, let me shoot them with this uh, Little House on the Prairie. Ah, uh, that's not bad. That's not bad. It was... I look back on it with fond memories. Yeah. I like that. But the weird thing is I saw an episode just last week. Yeah? It wasn't that nice. No, they were off their time. Uh, What happened in this particular... A bit like us. Yeah, what happened in this particular episode? um, Just happened to come on the TV. It's funny we should be talking about it. Please tell me there's no midgets in this episode. (laughs) Please. There's no midgets and there's there's no women in it um, Uh, that I was uh, drooling over. There's no bicycle shop or anything. um, Everybody's uh, sick of a plague or a fever and they're all in the school. I think I've seen that one. And they're not well, and they're all dying. And uh, Charles, obviously, doesn't get the uh, fever because he's too healthy, and he's uh, breaking up ice and putting yeah. ice on there, and he's helping, yeah. he's helping out Doc, mm. you know. And um, uh, somehow they figure out where the uh, source of the uh, disease is coming from. Yeah. It's from the grain mill or the flour mill. I'm sure I've seen this one. Hang on. Hang on a minute. They stole that plot and used it on the X Factor one. T- I'm not on the X Factor. The X Files one time. Well, they 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 go to the storehouse and they hey, they break open the lock. Wow, well, yeah. And then what's in there? A huge a, a, a delu- deluge of rats. Rats oh. all over the place. It looked horrible, and they had to burn down the uh, the flower house. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was pretty. You know, bl- yeah. pretty traumatic. Yeah. Well, for you. Uh, <laughs> Just for me, it. for me watching it. <laughs> so when I say children's TV was much nicer, yeah, like, you know, we've done the uh, bi- uh, bicycle episode, different strokes. Yeah, uh, was it nicer? We've got to come back to that. Was it more wholesome? We've, we've got to come back to we that. Will. Go I'm going to give you my number one. Go on. My number one TV show of the '80s for kids, Thundercats. I knew you were going to say that. The minute you said you knew something similar to He-Man, I knew it was going. Thundercats. Gonna... It's th- Thundercats. Is just so much better. I like. Than He-Man. I did like Thundercats. The theme tune kicks ass. The yeah. fact that they're all man cats is slightly less homoerotic than bodybuilder barely, men with barely. small pants on. <laughs> 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 and put it this way, right? If you'd just finished watching an episode of Different Strokes with the bicycle man, next thing up is Thundercats, no worries. Next thing up, He Man, you're going to end up with a complex. That is true. That is, <laughs> that is well put. It's, it, that would be children's TV sending you a message. Maybe maybe they were. Yeah, maybe they were telling you you were overly attractive as a child or something. Thundercats, yeah, not bad. Thundercats are on the loose. Quite good. Thundercats are here. Um, And it is is the eighties, so that's the important thing. Thundercats is the eighties show. It's fantastic. Okay, let's get let's do that. Very good. Let's go on to the uh, what your next list. Oh yeah, I've got one more of the of the uh, of the top fives. Top fives eighties TV shows for 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 adults. We'll say. Not necessarily making them an adult program, but you know, aimed at you know, people over eighteen generally, but you know, any age. Okay. They're not they're not necessarily uh, you know swearing and violent or anything. Okay. Uh, I'll give you my number five, and then you can probably try and think I'll of do something. I'll do my best. Seeing as you didn't bother. I'm on the spot. Go on. Number five, Police Squad. Vacant expression. <laughs> You've got to have seen Police Squad. No. Leslie, what's his name? Nielsen. Oh, that was a funny one. Yeah, 
It's oh, a comedy, yeah. Hilarious. Oh, yeah. I love Le- Leslie uh, yeah. Nielsen, is it? Yeah. Oh, he's it, great. It, it, For the guy from The Naked Gun. Yeah, yeah. Well, Police oh, Squad brilliant. was the TV series which inspired the film. Is it? Is it adult programs that are comedies or dramas? I just thought anything from the eighties, and it wasn't specific. Okay, so and I went for Police Squad. It was it was hilarious at the time. I could name out several, but you won't remember them. Go on, give me one of them then. Oh, uh, uh, well, the A Team, obviously. I almost put the A Team on it, but I I took them off the list because nobody ever died. Is it kids A Team or? It kind of is. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Maybe. But, yeah. I mean, Police Squad was adult. It was only 11 o'clock at night. So Well, the A- the A-team ended, and they sort of brought it back again. Yeah. I, towards the end of it being on, I didn't like it at all. I oh. wanted it to go away. Okay. Well, like most most things that sort yeah, of... Had its out, day. I had its day. It, it outstayed as welcome. Go on, counter that. Go on. Number four, Moonlighting. Oh, uh, now, now, you, yeah. now you got me. I yeah. used to watch Moonlighting. Moonlighting. And then towards the end, it went completely spastic and surreal. Yeah, didn't it? And it was still brilliant. And it just made no sense. They kept talking to the camera and all that kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah. then there was dream scenes and fake scenes and made-up scenes and... Oh, oh and it had Sybil Shepherd in it, and, so... And what, they, they, what started, else they started focusing more on... Um, what's her name? The, the, the secretary girl and the yeah, guy that, with the curly that, hair. That, that nerdy, the two nerdy people. Yeah, was it Nepesto or something? Your name was. Oh, don't ask me. I don't know what I her can't name remember. was. That was a long time ago, but uh, yeah, it, it was. It was focusing on them. Did they have their own series afterwards? I'm not sure. Oh, I don't think I don't don't remember that. They seem to be in it a lot. They might have made a pilot, but I don't remember the yeah. series. Hey, that's that's really good. I, I, actually, you, you set one off for me now. I used to watch as well. Um, Remington Steel. Oh, blimey! Yeah, I love Remington Pierce Steel. Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan. Ren- Remington Steel. I've got to tell you this story. Go. I've got. To, it's a Scientology story. Okay. Are you listening, Scientology fans? Back in the 80s, this is actually of the 80s, so it passes. I got a uh, piece of software, and I was on the internet in the late 80s, in fact, and uh, not many people were. And, yeah, and we got a piece of software to do voice over IP, much like Skype does. And it was very, very new technology at the time. And it was an American piece of software, and you could phone people in America if you paid and got a subscription, like Skype. But you could phone free phone numbers if you were phoning free phone numbers in America. So I thought, well, who can I phone in America for free on my crappy dial-up connection, which is all we had at the time? And we came across the Church of Scientology. So I phoned them up, and I don't know, you may get, you may not get this if you're American, but it, I thought it was a funny time. I said, uh, they said, hello, Church of Scientology. And I said, yeah, is Red Lester there? And they said... I'm sorry, we don't know anybody called Red Lester. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay. I said, what about Wensley Dale? And so they said, no, there's no Wensley Dale here. And, and uh, this went on. And then they said, uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't think we've got any of the people that you're talking for. Who is it you're looking for? And I said, Jesus, you do love Jesus, don't you? Everybody loves Jesus. <laughs> and, and they actually laughed and said thank you and hung, hung up. They were good sports. Oh, great. Can you ring them again and get them on? Should we do that? Yeah. Let's, let's ring, ring them now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Next. That was my Scientology story Thanks. from the 80s. Okay. What, what's it got to do with Remington Steel? It's just what I was uh, curious about there. Nothing. Completely okay. forgotten. Yeah, let's Completely go. Completely forgotten. Yeah, next one. Okay, uh, next one, number three, Quantum Leap. Oh, yeah, very good. Quantum Leap, seriously. Mm. It, it's, it's brilliant. 80s? I think it is 80s. I think it qualifies think as 80s. Might, um, okay, okay. I'll I don't go. know, maybe late 80s. I'll go it with went that. on for a while. They made hundreds late of them. Late 80s, yeah. And uh, yes, yeah. quite interesting. Cause I've... In fact, it is in the 80s because I actually looked on the website with 80s TV programs on to compile my list. Well, I would counter that and, there's yeah. p- and make a connection here because you know, I like making connections you with... Do. Um, Star Trek The Next Generation, which I think started in the late 80s as well. Yeah. Well, you've kind of poo-pooed me because that's also on my list. I've done you, haven't I? You've busted me. And uh, That's spe- my number one show the kind of, of the, the 1980s, the interesting which thing- just taken the wind out of completely. Yeah, I know. I don't care. <laughs> it's completely rained on my parade. Well, the interesting thing is anymore. Quantum Leap Guy yeah. became... Scott Bakula. C- Scott Bakula became... Uh, Archer. Became the... Uh, Captain Archer. Captain Archer of the new... Series, Enterprise. Enterprise. Yeah. Or the old Enterprise, because this is actually going back to... Uh, Prequel. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Is that it? Are we at the number one? Well, well we've missed number two. I'll go to number two. Go number on. two, very similar to one of the ones you said, The Waltons. Yeah. I, li- I like The Waltons, and i never seen all of them. I-, I saw some, and then there was a bit of a gap, and then they came back, and then they were just during the war, and then there was after the war, and are you, are I you, never saw them all in a row. Are you aware they did a lot of reunion movies? 
Have they did all them? sorts of stuff. I've seen bits and bobs of all when, sorts. When they're all grown up and armed robbers and drug addicts. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking about that. <laughs> You've made me think of something there uh, that used to be on afternoon television in Britain. Yeah. Every afternoon. It was Falcon an, Crest? No, it was another family. Um, I wonder if there's anybody out there remember this. The, go on. The Sullivans. Oh, I don't think I know that one. You need to look it up. If you saw that, you, you, it, it would come that. back to you uh, immediately. It was oh. every single afternoon. It was like Neighbours, only it's interesting. It was set in the 40s during wartime. Good grief. And it ran for I don't know how many years. <laughs> yeah, look, I found it. Yeah, let's play it. Let's Hang play on, let's see. Go. See, see. Listen, oh. listen. Yeah. Coming back to you. American? No, it's Australian. Vaguely, maybe. You must remember oh. those. You must remember those tank tops. <laughs> There's Big Dave. Oh, good God! Big Dave and the wife. We'll add this to the Go website on, under videos. Smile. If you want to see this video, look on the website under videos. <laughs> if no you, idea. If you want to see it. No idea what that was. Not a clue. Well, it was on every single afternoon. What? what why on weren't ITV. you at school? It's like I never went to school, isn't it? See, this is what you used to see that I didn't, you know, you just never went to school. I used to go to school, and uh, so I didn't see afternoon TV programs. You probably worked in the pits as well, you, coming from where you, you come from. You worked in the mines. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I was a pony wrangler. Yeah, you used to meet yourself coming out, going out the door. You yeah. used to work so hard. <laughs> <laughs> what little sense that makes. Yeah, God. <laughs> it's, a York, it's a Yorkshire thing. Is it? I, I work so hard, I never slept. <laughs> Talk about the bicycle episode part two. I'll be doing. Any, I, I, anybody who listened to uh, the last after hours, I yeah, anybody, hours, um, will have heard you talking about in great de- in great detail, probably too much detail, what happened mm-hmm. on the bicycle episode, the two part bicycle episode of different strokes. Different strokes. Uh, the one where uh, basically the children get semi abused by a paedophile who owns a bike shop. Pretty much so. I mean, he pretty much does what do he wants. Do you want to carry on digging in that hole? No. What I'm going to do part is two. I'm I'm going to go and review. What happened I'm, in going, part two? I'm going to review part two because yeah. I haven't reviewed it yet. I need to watch it, and then I'm going to do a summary when I come back on the show. You said you'd already done that. I haven't done it. I haven't had time. What a slacker! I know. Give me a chance. I'll watch it. To, I'll you watch told it me you'd already done that. I promise. And I'll then watch... I put you on air and say, "Okay, review it," and you actually haven't. No, it's fine because it's something for people lies to look, look forward to. <laughs> All you ever do is lie. <laughs> you just can't help yourself. I can't. I can't help it. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, I also want to point out that I think sinkholes are quite funny. And one appeared in Sweden the other day. What's that all about? I don't know. Sinkholes. Anybody? Is it just a hole that opens up in the ground? Big massive hole in wow. appears in the ground. Sometimes houses are on top of them and disappear. And hey, that's not funny. And uh, yeah, they, they appear in South America quite often for some reason. In Guatemala, is it just the and move- like that. Is it the movement of the? Uh... Sometimes it's mine shafts that cave in, mm. for example. Uh, but these big, big ones are too wide for a mm. mine shaft. I don't know what they are. I don't know if they have mining in Sweden. It's fascinating. Sinkholes. They just appear. They it's just, it's, just, it's oh, like. Um, they have a rumbling noise and then yeah, it's like the floor that. It's like when you were t- was talking about the typhoon jet the other day. It's just and you had no idea what I was on about. Fascinating stuff. <laughs> um, anything else? Uh, oh, Moving um, swiftly on. No, no. Oh, I, oh, by the way, just yeah, yeah. Go, going through the list there. Do, we, we did children's programs. Uh, we did, yeah. Oh, how comes Different Strokes wasn't on it? Because we we're both mate, m- massive fans. I, I wasn't that massive a fan. I was just putting up with you. Oh, really? You just encouraging me? Yeah, I was just encouraging you. I, well, I love Different Strokes. I it, was it was okay. I thought it was great. It, it was okay, but Thundercats was better. So was Wonder Years. So was Battlestar Galactica. So was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And Pro- so was Little Hobo. Problem is with these programs, they sort of they they re-aired them and re-aired them. So we, although we wouldn't be people of the same age, wouldn't have you know? Yeah, would uh, see the same programs. Have they been diluted? Have there, is their potency been lessened? I'll tell you one thing, you don't see different strokes on TV anymore. Not the bicycle episode, man, anyway. <laughs> I, know, I, I never saw that. That I, is never going to see the light of, air again, light of day again. I don't think so. Did you ever see Brass Eye? Kind of. Oh, God, they did an episode uh, on paedophiles again, okay. and it was... It was awful to watch. It was hyster- hysterically funny. And Channel 4 aired it at like 10 p.m. at mm. night. And they usually repeated it like two days later or the next day or something. And it never even made it to the repeat. It just got completely taken off the air and never seen again. A touchy subject. But it was so <laughs> funny, though. They were, they were, what they were doing is actually it was a parody of the way the media overreact to uh, mm. 
paedophile, like the the, the 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 tabloid media, like, oh my god, there are paedophiles everywhere. everywhere. There's millions of everywhere. them. Everywhere, you everybody's know, a paedophile. Chances, yeah. they started off by saying, chances are, if you're watching this video, you're a paedophile, <laughs> kind of thing. And then they got stars. They got um, um, what's his name, the big footballer, Gary Lineker. I know where this is heading. And they got him, and he held up a picture of a of a field, and in yeah. the middle there was a small boy, and it was taken from like a mile away. Yeah. And he said, if I showed this picture to a paedophile, he'd actually claw at the picture and try and get at the small child. <laughs> it was just ridiculous. And they, they, obviously they didn't take it but that's, uh, very that's, well. That's the same crowd that got um, some celebrities to do... <laughs> <laughs> To do some, uh, 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 you know, a little charity piece about this elephant. Yes, it's the same one. They yeah. got its trunk yeah. <laughs> stuck up its own anus. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I particularly, I particularly remember Paul Daniels. Yeah, he was on it. He yeah. was really and, sincere. And then Jilly Cooper on the phone. Yeah. And she was talking about this elephant that had got his trunk stuck up its ass. <laughs> and she completely, either she was a good sport or she took it in. I'm not sure which oh, was true. Wow. They were all written by Amanda Anucci. Those things. But uh, uh, well, I mean, fair play to the celebrities that they would do give their time free of charge. It was but, so funny. Oh, it was terrible. Anybody out there, go and look up the date today it's from 19 god late yeah, 80s early 90s back. or something it's yeah. it's fantastic it's hilarious and it's banned you'll never see it on tv again really no no never seen again but you'll surely find it on youtube you would find it probably on various sources on the internet i imagine yeah so right i think that's probably enough for today thanks very much everybody it's been another great episode of the out there are on turn to future radio.com yes I think it's probably time for a jingle, is it? Yeah, why not? Let's have a jingle. The Out There Hour. With Basil and Mark. You can contact us via... Facebook.com forward slash Out There Hour. Or YouTube.com forward slash AF Radio YT. Or email us on... Helpdesk at AlternativeFutureRadio.com. Skype us on AFR Guest. AlternativeFutureRadio.com. Well... That's it. See you all next later. See you next time uh, with, uh, well, another After Hours. See you next time. Thanks very much to everybody in Q8. See you, Q8. Bye-bye. <laughs> the Out there. What's that all about? <laughs> <laughs> Future Radio. The Out there Hour. With Basil and Mark. www.alternativefutureradio.com Yay! Hey, just for entering. Well, so she answered a question other than the one that we asked. Yeah. Fantastic. It was the right answer. It was just. It was the right answer, but to the wrong question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still makes her a winner in my book. Everyone's a winner on this show. Um, right, what else have we got to do? Um, oh, dear. I, oh, I want to point out, by the way, that I noticed earlier yesterday that putting things in your ears makes you cough. Yeah, that's true. I don't know what that's about. Uh, it's cotton buds. Well, I didn't put a cotton bud in my ear. I put an ear vacuum in my ear. Oh. Which is a device I bought from South Korea. Oh, I often... Hello, South Korea. We're probably big there Probably, as well. yeah. Well, I often put uh, cotton buds in my ear, and uh, you're never meant to do that. No, it says on the wrapper in big letters, do not put in your ear. Mm, a chemist said to me, never put anything smaller than... <laughs> <laughs> smaller than what? A chemist, seriously, a chemist said to me, never put anything smaller than your elbow in your ear. And I thought, well, what? How the, how the hell? How could I... you put your elbow in your ear? Or something bigger? Or... Oh. Oh, uh, your thumb or something? What? No, I think she just meant something the size of your elbow. <laughs> <laughs> so things that are bigger than your elbow are okay to put in your ear? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a little bit weird. That is a bit strange. It she was... wasn't a vet, was she? Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> An African elephant vet or something strange. Well, you've brought it up now, so tell us about the vacuum you bought from Korea. Oh, I don't really want to go into it. Good, yeah, carry on with it, the list. It's just not funny. It's not. It's no. not funny. Um, what else have you got on your list that you had something else that you wanted to do today? What, my top five? Well, no, well, before we get to top fives, you had something else. You had the competition and there was something else. Oh. Uh, was there some announcement or, or something else? Can't think of any. Oh, what slacker. <laughs> Amateur. Oh, I'll tell you what we were going to do. I'll see if I can call it up on the, uh, on the internet. We were going to do it on this day. Oh, uh, yeah. Which I know you said was boring, but... Uh, Completely. Yeah, I mean, it depends what happened on this day. I haven't checked, so, I don't know, we'll have a look. Oh. Should we do a top five while we're waiting for this crappy internet to get yeah, going? Yeah, yeah, go, go. Right, uh, we were deciding the other day that we were going to do some top fives. Um, I've done the top fives for uh, guests I'd like to have on, although I've got one that I'm not so sure about, because uh, <laughs> I don't know if he's alive or not. Um, I've done top five 80s TV shows. 
Oh, yeah. Top five worst films ever and top five 80s kids shows. Okay. So what do you think about that? Have you, have you done any of them? Can we actually compare anything? Or have, or have you just completely slacked off and I've, not done anything? I've done one. You've done one. It's the uh, guest we'd like to have on. Right, go on. You want me to go first? Yeah, go on. Do, start at number five if you've got five. Well, it's not in any particular order. Right. So it's, it's not a five to one because I don't want to insult or pull off any of them. <laughs> <laughs> What's on the agenda today, Mark? Um, I think you've got a competition to announce. Oh, yeah. for a, 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 well, not so much a prize, but a winner. Well, uh, 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 we'll see. Prize? <laughs> the winner. The I think you should probably remind people what the competition is, seeing as you've been supposed to do this for two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Let's get there. We played a track. We did. Two weeks ago. Yes. And we said to guess the artist. Guess the artist. Oh, that was the first of the two competitions, because we did it again the week after with two tracks. Yeah. 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 So it's the first competition. It's the first one. Right. Okay. True. Uh, uh -huh. The winner was Rose McNeely right. of Texas. Aha. Uh -huh. Um, and she, she gets. I hope she's not jaundiced, because otherwise she'd be the yellow rose of Texas. That's oh, no, that's a good one. Oh, oh, that's a, yeah. Where do I pull those from? Moving on really swiftly. Okay. Uh, she guessed it was uh, waiting for the train. Waiting for the train, yeah. By uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Ruffin. What the hell are you on about? That's not who it was. <laughs> <laughs> you're making this. <laughs> you're making this up. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. She, uh, she's right. That is the uh, who sang "Waiting for a Train," just not the one. That's we, just not the. Just not the one we played. Yeah, but I mean, but, I thought we should send her a, an autographed uh, <laughs> photograph of ourselves just for entering. Send her a sample of our DNA. Ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves for the all-encompassing power that is After Hours. The After Hours on Alternative Future Radio. The After Hours with Basil and Mark. www.alternativefutureradio.com Yay! Wow. Wow. <laughs> and one for Q8. Oh yes, we are in fact big in Q8. Yay! That's a big yay out to Q8 there. Hello, Q8. Hello to all our friends in the Middle East. We do seem to be quite big in Q8. The stats are certainly stacking up, and uh, Q8 is right up there. We don't, we, don't, we don't know who you are. We don't know why you are there, but, you know, whatever. Hey, really. Let, let Hello, us, Q8. Let us know. We were most popular in Q8, then comes America, then, then I think Saudi Arabia. It's, yeah. What's that all about? Is, uh, is Al-Qaeda in Q8? Is that where they're hiding out? But we're so anti what, and they're listening to us? Well, we're, we're so anti-establishment. Yeah. Do you think that they think we're there? We're like a mentor to them. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we're uh, radical humor clerics or something. That could be it. What's... <laughs> what's what? <laughs> right, right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, that are probably listening in. Right, go in. Then. We, so, you, can, you can do all five flat then. Okay. I don't want to say that one's better than the other. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Although that is what you mean. No, no, it isn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it isn't. I know who number one. You got little is. stars next to some of them. Well, I'll start with uh, I'll start with number five. Then I think George Norrie. George Norrie. Um, yeah, George Norrie. But he's an interviewer. Yeah. What but, are you going to ask him about? Ah, oh, he's just great. He's the uh, host of uh, Coast to Coast AM in America. He is indeed. Yeah. Uh, my favourite radio show. <clears throat> Yes. The uh, inspiration for the Out There Hour. i tell you who I have. I've got an actual space missing on my top five. I only came up with four. But I'll have Art Bell for number five. Oh, good, yeah. Because um, I've actually added Art Bell on Skype. He's still kicking around, you know, and he's still doing stuff. He's, he's just not working at Coast to Coast. I think he's in Hawaii or somewhere. He's, he's retired, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, Art Bell was quite cool. He was cool before George Norrie. This is pretty good. I'll do mine and you, then you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah you, you do one of yours then. This is people now I seriously want to get onto the show. And if we've got the same one, then, well, I imagine some of them might be the same. Let's see. I, be, I bet we've got the same one here. Go on. Nigel Farage. No, but that's who I should have put on there. I knew there was somebody I was trying yeah, to think of. Yeah. Nigel Farage, yeah, definitely. Explain who Nigel Farage is. He is a UK, uh, UKIP, uh, UK, UK Independence Independent Party, Party yeah, yeah. Uh, MEP in the European 